Here's a pretty standard cloth setup. You have the uh, a character here. We're just going to use Tommy as an example, and it you know a lot of people like to break it out into cloth, uh, the different elements, you know, shirt, pants, and then the collision geometry, just to kind of keep it a little more manageable, and then merge it together before putting it into the solver. Um, and what I've done here is, you know, you want to change the rest shape, say uh, you want the shirt to be shorter and you would think you could do that because it'd be like, oh, there's a node to do that. There's this vellum rest blend. And it actually, it, it kind of tricks you because it's like, hey, look, there's like a blend slider and you can just set keyframes on this, right? Uh, so I've got this keyframed at one, keyframed at 24. And uh, this is going to do absolutely nothing. So if I run the solve, okay, so yep, there it is. Uh, not doing what we expect it to do. Uh, but here's a quick example of how to do this the correct way to actually make it work. So what I've done is we still have the rest shape and we merge it. And here we have out rest geometry and it's keyframed. Also, another thing you will want to look out for is in the cloth constraints, we're going to be using the output groups for the stretch and bend in the rest shape node inside the dot network. Uh, by default, these are off. So just make sure you turn those on. And what you do is you jump into your dot network and inside the dot network, make a vellum rest blend, which is the weirdest thing, right? Cause like, why would you even want the SOP version of this? Anyways, inside the dot network, you make a vellum rest blend node, make sure you set it to each frame. That's another little gotcha there. Um, and set your constraint group to bend and stretch and set the source to SOP, point it to that out rest uh, that you just set up there and then uh, we can go back up and simulate it. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, and another thing to look out for is if your rest is just exploding uh, on the first frame of the solve, watch out that you didn't do this. The uh, the order that you put these merges in is super important and it has to be consistent. So if your sim does this, oh no, oh no, please stop. There we go. Okay. If your sim does this, it most likely means, you know, uh, a quick way to troubleshoot, of course, is to just uh, jump in here and disable the rest. And then if it sims fine, then you know the rest shape is... Uh, is causing the explosion and more often than not it's an issue of um, these merges being out of order okay so i just made this little test scene of to explain like why merge order matters and so i've got a square and a triangle these would kind of represent a shirt and a cape or something uh, just regular cloth constraints on them and i also put in uh, a primitive attribute to just determine or to more clearly show which is which. So if we look at the merge of the constraints, we'll see uh, the square and then the triangle. And these are the constraints that the cloth is holding it together with. Now, if we connect them in reverse order, now the triangle's first, square is second, but the geometry will be showing the square first, triangle second. So what's happening is then the triangle constraints are trying to connect to the square geometry and it's just causing a whole lot of chaos and it's uh, it's not gonna work and it's gonna explode. So that's why it's exploding. And uh, just real quick, notice this merge has a exclamation mark. It's because it's throwing a warning. That's because I'm using for this one, a cloth constraint, this one, a distance constraint, and the cloth constraint includes a drag tangent and drag normal. The distance doesn't have that. And so 
So yeah, there's the drag there. No drag on the distance constraint. Uh, just watch out for that because what will happen is the merge will use the attributes default setting, which might not be what you want. Um, in this case, it defaulted drag and drag tangent to one, which isn't great. Uh, so just watch out when you see little warnings like that. It's something to pay attention to. And while we're at it, uh, another way you can potentially avoid this whole merge issue is you can use the vellum pack node. And basically that takes the geometry and the constraint and puts it into one connection. And that way you can merge it in whichever order you like because the geometry and the constraints are together. So in this case, it doesn't matter. Um, let's see. If we look at the vellum constraint geometry primitives, it's square triangle, the geometry, square triangle. But if you mix them up, it doesn't matter because they're synchronized. So triangle square, go to the constraint geometry, triangle square. Um, so that works fine. One thing to keep an eye out though, look, it doesn't throw the warning on the merge because the 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 constraints are packed, so it's not really seeing what all, that merge isn't seeing what it's merging. And so that's a little tricky. And uh, I I don't know, I avoid using vellum packs just because it creates a whole lot of nodes. But whatever, whatever you want to do, it's Houdini, it's very flexible. There's a million ways to do it. So anyways, I just wanted to explain that.